All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a cloud server on DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a website where you can create servers. But before we get into the actual process of creating a server, let's discuss what a server is. A server or a cloud server is just a remote computer or a laptop that never gets turned off. And because it is never turned off, people over the internet can access it anytime. A server also has a static IP address, that is, the IP address never changes. Now that we have discussed what a server is, let's get into the process of creating a server. So the next thing that I want you to do is go to the DigitalOcean platform and have a look around, just get the feel of it, what's it about. We'll be using the DigitalOcean platform to create a server. Now the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to open other link which is going to give you $10 free worth of credits and you'll be able to follow along this tutorial for free. So I want you to go to this link and then press enter and just give you a little bit of time to paste this link on your browser and then you can press enter and it will take you to the DigitalOcean website. If you go, if you went to that link, it's my referral link and you'll get $10 free worth of credits. Now you can sign up and the sign up process is pretty easy. So I'm not going to get into that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in into my own account because I've already signed up and I'm just going to put in my email address, my password. After you have logged in, you'll be taken to a page which will look somewhat like this. On DigitalOcean, servers are called droplets. So the next thing that we are going to do is create a server that is create a droplet. So we are going to click on create droplet. After clicking on that, you'll see a page somewhat like this. First option is to choose an image, that is what kind of operating system do you want on your server. We'll go with Ubuntu latest version that is 16.04 and that's it. Then we'll choose a size of what kind of our remote computer, what kind of specifications of a remote computer or a remote server should be. So I'm just going to choose the lowest one because we don't need that much. If you signed up on the DigitalOcean platform using the referral link that I gave you, then this shouldn't be a problem. And even if you did not, it's just $0.007 per hour. So it's not going to be a problem because we are not going to be using this server for long. So you can just choose this option, then we'll scroll down and it gives us an option of add block storage. We are not going to choose this option. Then we are going to choose a data center region. This default one of New York should be fine but you can choose any of the servers that are closest to your city or uh, you can choose a data center region where a lot of traffic on your website or on your server is going to be coming from. I'm just going to leave it to New York. You can do the same. And then it has some additional options of private networking, backups and other stuff. We are not going to use that. Then we are going to get to the new option of add your SSH keys. We are going to get back into it after we complete all the below stuff. The next option says how many droplets do we want? That is how many servers do we want? We can click on this plus size and it's going to show and it's going to give us more servers, but we want only one server. So we are going to leave it to one droplet and then we are going to choose the name. Let's give it the name of um, connection, a new course and that's it. Then we are going to get back to add your SSH keys. Now, what is this SSH key? SSH keys are required to connect to your server. If you don't add a SSH key, which you can totally do, you'll get a email, which will have your username. That is the root and your password. And you'll be able to log in through those username and that password into your server. But we are not going to do that because if you are in Windows, it's really difficult to paste the password because it's really, really long. So instead of that, we are going to use the SSH keys, which is actually more secure. So SSH keys basically give you, gives you two keys, private key and public key that you have to paste in. So if we click on new SSH key, you can see that there's an option of SSH key content and its name. So next thing we are going to do is install something known as PuTTY. So what we are going to do is we are going to close this tab and then we'll just go to Google and type in 40, press enter and the, we'll go to the first link. It's a free SSH and telnet client for Windows. We are going to click on that and download putty over here. 
we are going to click on download putty if you are on windows this is required to connect to your server but if you are on linux you can just ssh to it directly but as i am on windows i am going to show you how to do it using the windows version now if you are using the 32 bit version you can download this link but my computer is 64 bit so i am going to download this link now how do you know which bit is your computer you can just go to my computer right click on it and click on properties and it will show you whether your computer is 32 bit or 64 bit now we are just going to install this putty we can save this file i've already installed it on my computer so i'm not going to do that but the installation process is pretty simple just make sure that you remember where you installed the files so I have installed my putty in my F folder. So I'm just going to search for it. And these are the files of my putty. So I'm just going to click on putty.exe, double click on it, and it will open up this prompt. Now it has some kind of fields. The first field is host name or the IP address, which we need to put in, and the port address. And if we go to the connection, SSH, SSH by the way, stands for Secure Shell Hub. And if we click on auth, there is a part which says private key file for authentication and we need to give this file to putty. Now before we go any further, if you are a Linux or a Mac user, what I want you to do is go to your DigitalOcean web platform where we were creating a new droplet and we are going to right click on how to use SSH keys and it will give you a guide of how to use SSH keys if you are on the Linux or Mac OS platform and you can just follow this guide along. But if you are on Windows, you can use the other guide, that is this guide. And I'm just going to right click on it and open it in a new tab. And you can just follow along this guide or you can just follow along the video which I am currently doing. So as you can see, they have told us to install putty and putty gen. And if we go to our folder of putty, you can see that there is this file called putty gen which has been installed automatically with putty. So now we'll be following along in the Windows platform. But if you are on Linux or Mac, make sure that you follow along with this guide and you won't have to even download Putty. So the next thing we are going to do is just open up Putty Gen. Let me just close it up actually so that I can open it up again. And this is the Putty Gen platform. The next thing we need to do is create a private file, private and a public key pair. So what we are going to do is click on generate and then this is called entropy. We'll just randomly move our mouse in a blank area and it's going to generate a public and a private key for us. The public key needs to be pasted on the DigitalOcean platform. So this is the keys we have generated. This is the public key that is there. So now we are going to do is we are going to save the public key. Let's actually save it on the desktop and we're just going to name it public and we are going to save it and then we are going to save the private key. Are you sure you want to save this key without a password to protect it? Yes, that's fine. We're just going to save it on the desktop and we are going to call it private. It's going to be saved with the extension of PPK. We're going to click on save. And now we have generated the public and the private key for us. Now there is this parameter of RSA, DSA and you don't have to really worry about it. Let it just remain to default, that is the RSA. So now that we have generated the public and the private key, we are going to paste the public key on our DigitalOcean platform. So we are just going to copy this and paste this where it says how to use SSH keys. So we are just going to paste it and as you can see the red color disappears. And this name cannot be blank, you can name this anything, we are just going to name it project key and we are going to click on add SSH key. Now, as you can see in your SSH keys, there is a new key called project key. If you don't see the window key, don't worry about it. This was the key that I created earlier. So that is why it's showing over here. Now that you have created the project key, we are just going to click on create, which is going to create a droplet for us or a server for us. After its completion, you will be able to see that the droplet has been created and is showing us the IP address. We are just going to click on copy. But actually before that, we have to do one more thing. We have to go to our putty, not putty gen, we have to go to putty and in our SSH which stands for secure shell, we are going to go to auth and we are going to give it the private key file for authentication. So we are just going to click on browse, we are going to go to desktop where we stored our private file and this is the private.pbk, we are going to open it up and then we are going to go back to our session. 
So if you notice, this is on the SSH button. And if you don't have these settings, don't worry about it. These are from my previous projects. And we are going to paste the host name over here. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go to my putty or putty gen. And I'm going to paste it over here. And the port, I'll remain it to 22. Now you can save this. We can just call it a new project so that we don't have to do it again and again. And we can save it. And as you can see, a new project setting has added over here. Now we have done everything that we wanted and we are just going to click on open now. And it's going to give us this beauty security alert. Just click on yes and login as you'll have to put the username as root, press enter. And now we have successfully logged into our server. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. In this video, we learned how to create a server using DigitalOcean. We learned about SSH keys and how to open up our server using this terminal of Putty. Now that we are in the terminal, we can do anything. For example, we can type in LS and we can see all the kind of folders that are in. Right now, there are no folders. So we can just create a folder by using mkdir new and we can now type in ls and as you can see the new folder has been created. So now we are going to do more of stuff with this server in the future videos where we go into how to create uh, something known as a reverse shell in our project but that is in the next section so you don't have to really worry about it right now. So we also learned about SSH keys and lastly we learned about how to open this stuff up in terminal. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.